Hi friends and welcome. This morning we're continuing to talk about cooperation. And cooperation is working together to do more than we could do by ourselves. What I think is so cool about cooperation is that it's a way that God reminds us we are not alone. God never wants us to feel alone. He gave us his Holy Spirit so that we would know God is always with us. And God is empowering us and giving us what we need to live life like Jesus lived, right? And so when we are trying to live like Jesus lived and do the things that Jesus asks us to do, we get to do it together in cooperation. And so we never have to feel alone. Isn't that amazing? God never wants us to feel alone or like that we have to do it all by ourselves. I think it's incredible that God cooperates with us and helps us to cooperate with each other. So we're going to look at a story in the Bible about how four friends came together to help their friend who really needed some help. I love this story, you're gonna love it too. But before we get to all that, let's stand up and get ready to worship together. Whenever I need some answers, God, I turn to you. that you're chasing after me it makes me want to run to where you are God, you make this journey worth it I give you all my heart When I don't know what to do You help me figure it out God, I run to you When I need a solution I have no doubt
to work on our memory verse. Hey Chuck, hit me with that word. Thank you. All right, we are gonna read our memory verse from Ecclesiastes chapter six, verse nine. And it goes like this. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Ecclesiastes six, nine. Now let's work on it together. This is a cool verse because we're talking about cooperation. And this verse has everything we need to know about cooperation. First, Two are better than one. Two have to be better than one in cooperation. So, two are better than one. Why? Because they can help each other in everything they do. Obviously. So, let's work on the verse together. Two are better than what? One. Why? Because they can help each other in everything they do. Ecclesiastes 6, 9. Let's do it one more time. All right, tell me the truth. Two are better than one. Why? Because they can help each other in everything they do. Ecclesiastes 6, 9. All right, go take a minute and work with each other. Ask each other, how many are better than one? Two. Why? Because they can help each other in everything they do. So go do it, cooperate. Ecclesiastes 6, 9. Haley, and nothing cheers me up like a good sing-along. Of course, sing-alongs work a lot better when you're not the only one in the room. Sorry for it. They really require cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Sing-alongs bring people together. They make people happy and they can make the world a better place. I love it when musicians get together for a sing-along to help raise money for other people. This one's for the children. There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O. You see, different people with different talents all coming together with the same goal to help people in need. That's major cooperation. 
today's story is about a person who was in need and the friends who worked together to help him. Maybe my musician friends can help me with my sing-along. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Much better together. I'll see you soon. Bye. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Imagine living in Judea 2,000 years ago. If you got sick, there were very few doctors. If you couldn't see or hear or walk, there was no one you could turn to for help. Please, help me. But when Jesus began to travel and teach and heal, suddenly there was hope. A way to get better and start life all over again. Stories of Jesus reached a man in Capernaum who couldn't walk and his four friends. Let's call them Leo, Mike, Raph, and Donnie. Jesus is in town, right here in Capernaum, over at Joe's house. Ginormous crowd, dude. The man who couldn't walk tried hard not to get his hopes up. I can't even get there, much less fight my way through a crowd. You don't have to, because we got you. Ready? Dude, one, two, three, lift. <laughs> the four friends each grabbed the corner of the man's mat. Together, they carried him out of the house and down the dusty road. Soon, they could hear the sounds of a large crowd. There's Joe's place. Oh, yeah. What's happening? People jammed in 20 deep around the door. We got religious leaders, teachers, poor people, rich people, standing room only. Actually, there's no standing room, dude. Only room is up. Sure enough, around the back of the house, the four friends discovered a narrow staircase up to the flat roof. Wait, how is this any better? And down, dudes. Hold it. We can't even hear Jesus. Oh, we can't hear him yet. That's about to change. Help me pry up this clay. It's time to raise the roof. Within minutes, the four friends pried up large sections of packed clay to reveal a rough thatch of sticks connecting the roof beams. <laughs> Gotta bust these out. And voila. As dust and beams of sunlight spilled into the room, the four friends could see the shot crowd Escaping up at them. The only one who didn't seem shocked was the man at the front, watching them with deep, kind eyes. Jesus! Hey, all y'all people down there, get ready, because our friend is coming through. The four friends each grabbed the corner of the mat and began to lower their friend into the rough hole they had created. Hey, what's going on? Hey, wait, you can't do this. Just stop it. Hold on. In spite of the confusion, the man who couldn't walk was finally lowered to the floor, right in front of Jesus. The nerve! Just look at all this damage. Jesus wasn't looking at the damage or the shocked crowd. His eyes went from the man on the floor to the four faces peering through the hole in the roof. In their eyes, he'd read what they'd done and how certain they were that he could heal their friend. He saw their faith. Then, Jesus smiled at the man on the floor. Friend, your sins are forgiven. <gasps> the religious leaders didn't dare speak their thoughts aloud, but inside their heads, they were nearly screaming. Who is this fellow to say such an evil thing? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus could tell exactly what was going on in their heads and hearts. Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? He wouldn't dare. Well, at least everyone will see he's a fraud. 
Jesus had God's power to meet the greatest need of the man who couldn't walk by forgiving his sins. But that wasn't something the religious leaders could see. So Jesus gave them something they could see. I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus looked down again at the man on the mat, right into his eyes. Get up, take your mat and go home. It seemed that everyone, from the four friends on the roof to the people jammed in the doorways and windows, was holding their breath. The man who couldn't walk sat up. Then he stumbled to his feet. His friends cheered. Oh, you got this! Deep breath. Baby steps. Bring it, dude. The man took a step, a hop, a leap. I, I can walk. I can walk. Praise God. The man grabbed his mat and danced out of the house to meet his friends for a group hug. The crowd was amazed and filled with wonder. Most unusual thing I've seen in all my years. Well, praise God. Praise God. Through the power of God and the help of a few friends, the man who once couldn't walk now ran home on his own two feet. His life forever changed. Whenever Jesus was in town, people hurried to see him. The word was that Jesus could miraculously heal people. So the man who couldn't walk needed help to get to Jesus. And his friends went above and beyond to make that happen. They saw a need and they worked together to do something about it. And don't miss this, don't miss this. Jesus saw that the man had a different kind of need. It's the same need that all of us have. The man needed to be forgiven of his sins. He got the miraculous healing he was looking for, plus he was forgiven. You and I can have that same forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. So there are needs all around us, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, even the world. And you can do something about it, but you don't have to do it alone. Right? B A N G O Bingo! You can work together with others. Maybe you can form a team to help clean up your park or help out in your neighborhood. Maybe you could put on a show to help raise money for people in need in your own community or in other countries. Sometimes needs seem too big to tackle alone. So why not work together? That's the one thing to remember today. Work together to help someone in need. Ask God to help you see the needs all around you. And together, we can make the world a better place. I'll see you next time. Rock on, people! Y'all come back now, you hear? Like, bye! <laughs> what they said. Friends, thank you so much for coming and learning more about cooperation with me. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for teaching us more about yourself through this story about how these friends came together to help their friend. And then you healed this friend, Lord, and you said his, his sins are forgiven. God, you do it all. You heal us, you help us to grow, you love us. God, it's amazing. I thank you for these stories that show us this. And Father, I just pray that you would like help this truth hide in our friend, me and my friend's hearts, that you love us, that you grow us, that you want us to work together. Father, show us more about the way you want us to live. We are with you, God, and I know that you're with us. So bless this week as we learn more and more about you, and um, we just look forward to coming back together and worshiping you again, again together. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, this was so fun. Let's go cooperate. All right, remember, I love you, God loves you, and I'll see you next week. Help me, God, to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can stand still, no, you have given me purpose, all my, all my heart is yours, all my, all my life is yours, I will, I will make a move for you.
take up the call to serve you. Serve you. You have given me a job to do. I wanna love the world just like you. Yeah. You have given 